So hey Veritasium, this is Suman and I am also a physics nerd like you and I had made a video about the uh, Zeeman shift and I had um, made some corrections in some professors teaching how the Zeeman shift is actually done and if you are looking this video please help me to recheck my theorem I am not saying it would be my theorem or it has done by someone already else I don't know because I had made some particular assumptions, I have done some bunches of mathematics and came out with a beautiful result. Uh, if you watch this video completely, you will end up getting, you will see that. And if you had, if you uh, really understand what I am doing here, doing in that particular mathematics, so please help me. And I cannot show my theorems to my teachers. There is no something very particular like the research faculty here and I cannot do my experiments on particular subjects and particular fields. So I am making this video and I guess this video will reach up to you and you might help me to recheck this theorem and re recheck this value. And I am just, if you are watching, very much thank you. Now let us do the, some maths regarding the Zeeman shift effect right so for our better convenience i am assuming that the nucleus is at rest right and there will be some sort of velocity and this will be the electron hour we are just doing it by the classical idea right and the velocity of electron could be in either in this direction or could be in that direction right we don't know uh, where the velocity is moving either it is counterclockwise or the clockwise motion now we are applying the external magnetic field in this direction, right? We are applying magnetic field into the plane of whiteboard, right? Magnetic field are going like this. So there will be some magnetic force acting upon the electron, right? If there is some field, there will be some force and this force is acting upon the electron. And if you do the cross product of two vectors, if the velocity is in this direction, and the magnetic field is inward so you would do v cross b so v cross b gives you the direction of force right v cross b v cross b gives you the direction of force and this would end up getting the magnetic force could be in the direction in this direction right and if the velocity would be in that direction and magnetic field is inward then you will when you cross that two vectors you will end up getting the magnetic force could be in upward direction right Right, and the centripetal force is always acting towards the center. We are assuming the center is nucleus, right? And you can see here and make a prediction that the magnetic force upon an electron could be at any direction. Either it is supporting the centripetal force or it is opposing the centripetal force, right? So the net force acting upon this charged particle would be so. Uh, under equilibrium condition, the electrostatic force is equal to centripetal force and that would be m r omega square. We are just doing the classical idea, not the quantum mechanical idea, right? So when you apply the external field, the net force would be electrostatic force cross plus or minus magnetic force. I am using plus or minus sign here because it has its own implication here that if you take plus, the magnetic field would be in support to the centripetal force provided by the electrostatic force and if you take minus the magnetic field is opposing the electron opposing the motion of not opposing the electron of motion of electron but actually opposing the electrostatic field right and there will be some shift of let us assume that will end up getting some new angular frequency omega dash is square right and you can assume that omega dash will be omega plus d omega there will be slightly change in angular frequency of electron right so the electrostatic force is nothing but mr omega square under equilibrium condition plus or minus and the magnetic force is charge an electron time v cross b vector right v cross b vector and this will end up getting mr omega plus d omega whole squared. So we are getting m r omega square plus minus e v cross b equals m r omega square plus 2 omega d omega plus 
d omega square so we know that the d omega is very small quantity and if we square that small quantity we will will we end up getting very small quantity and we can neglect this term right and here we will get mr omega square plus minus e v cross b and mr omega square plus 2 omega d omega right sorry 2 mr omega d omega and this will cancel out because this is electrostatic force that is supporting the centripetal force they has to be cancelled out each other right and there will be plus minus e v cross b vector by 4 pi m v vector and this would be i have already write 4 pi m sorry 2m and this r omega is nothing but the linear velocity of the particle and this is the slightly change in frequency of electrons angular velocity right this would be b and we will again end up getting omega d omega so v cross b by 2m v vector and this would be we have omega is 2 pi times frequency right we are using f for frequency of electron and nu is the frequency of photon and there will be plus or minus e v cross b vector by 2m sorry this 2 pi if we got here we will get end up getting 4 pi m v vector and there will be some shift in frequency of electron right and and and, and i have watched many of the teachers in youtube channel they are doing something very much wrong with the uh, classical effect or uh, wavelength shift of photon in here let me see what they have done now they assume that the d of would be equals to plus or minus e v cross b upon 4 pi mb i am just sharing their idea and now i am approaching my idea in further more further apart right so this is nothing but e v b by 4 pi m v and now you have to assume you have to think that this is the frequency frequency shift of electron not the frequency shift of photon because we are all doing this all this mathematics for the electron and this is not the frequency shift of photon because many teachers many professors use this as the frequency shift of photon which is very much wrong even my textbook even my teacher has done it very badly so so we know now the teacher will tell you that uh, frequency is nothing but speed of light upon wavelength of light this equation holds true for the photon and this is the frequency of electron and they were doing what they were differentiate both sides d up and they will end up getting negative c upon lambda square d lambda right if you know the partial difference if you know the differentiation you will end up you will know how this term has come out right so they use this thing here and they end up getting negative c upon lambda square d lambda plus minus e b upon 4 pi m right e b upon 4 pi m now this velocity will cancel out this velocity and they will say that this is the shift in e b lambda square upon 4 pi m c and they will tell you that this is the shift in frequency of photon shift in sorry this is the wavelength shift in wavelength of photon how this is the frequency of electron shift in frequency of electron and this must have to be the frequency shift of electron how they jump here from here to here and they will end up getting the frequency of wavelength uh, sorry frequency of photon or wavelength of electron so i am just saying this is the frequency shift of electron and they were using this approach just and and they convince you that this is the frequency shift of sorry wavelength shift of photon how this is for the calculation we are doing is 
for the photon, I sorry, for the electron, and how this wavelength shift is for the photon. This doesn't make any sense. Right? In fact, if they have used velocity is if we, if they assume the velocity is constant they will end up getting 4 pi mv and this could be the wavelength shift of electron wavelength shift of electron if they use v and they were using c instead they were using c and making the wrong mathematics i guess so right and i am going to express my own idea how there will be shift in frequency of photon if the very if veritasium was this better please so they were telling you this here wrong right they were telling very much wrong about here so now what would be my idea to explain that normal Zeeman effect right and now I'm rubbing this all the bottom because you have already know that the mathematics they were doing is very much wrong now up to here the same process and we will end up getting plus minus e v cross b vector by 2 m v vector right and this is nothing but d omega can be written as 2 pi times frequency right and this would plus minus e v cross b vector by 4 pi m v vector and this is d of and this would be d of now i'm assuming i'm assuming that the electrons energy is quantized and they obey the planck's radiation law my assumptions is that so i am doing multiplication with Planck's constant times d of and we will end up getting plus or minus e h upon 4 pi m v vector here we will have v cross b vector right and we know that the total energy of electron is negative so i am using negative here so does here and this would not change the plus or minus this would slightly change plus minus is minus plus i guess and this would be the energy shift of electron and we will end up getting minus plus and this term this much term we can write is Bohr's magneton mu v v vector cross b vector by v vector so this is the energy shift of electron not the energy shift of photon this is the energy shift of electron so now 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 I can show you something here. You can write plus or minus and V cross B would be at the 90 degree, you know that. And you can write mu V. If you open this cross product, you will end up getting VB upon V vector, right? V. If we use the magnitude of V. And this will end up. And there will be shift in energy of electron that is plus minus mu V B. If electron obey Planck's radiation law, right? The shift in energy of electron in this orbit. We are not exciting the atom yet. We are not exciting the electron yet, right? So this would be the energy shift. And you can ask me why you are saying this would be the energy shift. Because the unit of Bohr's magneton is joule per tesla. And the magnetic field is Tesla and if you go here, that would be the joules and the dimension only, I guess this equation might. So up to now here, you might have understand some of the concepts, right? The shift in energy of electron would be Bohr's magneton times the how much field strength you are applying to that atom, right? And now I uh, am exciting this atom. So I am exciting this atom. And this would be the energy shift. And when atom jumps from higher energy state E2 to E1, then it will emit some radiation. We all know that. From the Bohr's idea, I am writing this here. From Bohr's idea. From Bohr's idea, we can write it as that. Right? And now if you differentiate both sides, DE2 minus DE1 is equals to H. D 
nu of photon, right? And you can write from here, E2 is plus minus mu B, B, minus plus minus mu B, B equal H B nu of photon. And if you look up here, this will end up getting D nu is equals to zero. And if you integrate both sides, you will get a constant frequency of photon. But according to Zeeman's idea, there will be splitting of photon. The photon would split into more than one component, component line, more than two or three components line, or even more. But we are getting this. Am I doing something wrong? Up to here, I guess I am doing something very much wrong. But now my idea, up to here, I guess you have to understand some of the basics. Right? And up to here, I am very much doing this is not the correct way of energy shift. So now from here, you have to realize something very much interesting about you have to know something about the Faraday law of electromagnetic induction. If you know the cross product of two vectors, the V cross B would give you the electric field. The magnetic field induces some electric field within that current loop in an atom. So, D can be replaced by plus minus mu V electric field induced by V vector, velocity vector. So, V cross B could be in support of could be in support of nucleus electric field right and you can here this is v and this is the v can be in either any of the direction and magnetic field is in inward direction so v cross b could be in support of nucleus electric field or would opposing the nucleus electric field so now you can make some assumptions here so this would be the energy shift of electron Right? So, you can again excite the atom in higher energy state using Planck's, sorry, Bohr's idea. Right? From the Bohr's idea. And if you differentiate both sides, you will end up getting dA2 minus d one h d nu of photon. So now, you can write plus minus mu B E induced second by V2 minus plus minus mu b e induced in first by v1 equals h d nu of photon right so h d nu of photon if you take plus minus mu b as common then you will end up getting e induced in second by v2 minus e induced in first by v1 right and you will end up getting d nu of photon equals plus minus mu b upon h e induced in second by v2 minus e induced in first by v1. So this would be the electric field induced in second orbit by velocity of that orbit and electric field induced in first orbit by velocity of electron in that particular orbit, right? So this would be the frequency shift. And if this whole terms came out to be either difference in these two terms came out to be in zero and you will again end up getting nu of photon as constant then you can make a particular very beautiful assumptions that the electron do not obey Planck's radiation law so this is my idea of frequency shift of electron, sorry, frequency shift of photon. So I have, I know that you might have understand this concept. Because of magnetic field in second orbit, there will be shift in energy equivalent to this. And there will be shift in energy of first orbit equivalent to this. And I'm doing all that bunches of mathematics. So if this term, terms also came out to be zero, then you can make a very beautiful assumptions that the electron do not obey Planck's radiation law. And this was my this was my time. And bye bye.